Hello, my name is Amy Bushnell, and I'm giving this presentation on Ariel Silk's move called the Rebecca Sequence. Before we get into the move, I'm going to talk about some basics of equipment and safety. First off, we have our Ariel Silk, Silk. the Rescue 8 attached to it, some carabiners that have twist locks on them, a swivel, and a sewn runner. A sewn runner is useful if you are rigging to an eyelet hook instead of rope. The sewn runner is nice because when you put metal on metal, it'll wear it down faster and the sewn runner will keep your equipment surviving longer. So proper silk rigging, the optional sewn runner, I have a carabiner, the swivel, another carabiner, the rescue eight, and the silk. Now on top of proper silk rigging, you also want to have pads underneath. Even if you already know a move, it is always better to have something there for safety than to wish you did if you fall. Another thing to always be conscious of, even if you already know the move really well, is you always need a spotter whenever you're doing aerial silks. If you're trying something new, if you're trying something you've done before, you should never silk alone. If you get caught upside down and no one's around, you will have to hang there if you can't get yourself out until someone notices. So a spotter is always the best choice. And don't forget to stretch. You'll be using lots of muscles in your body, and you don't want to rip or tear anything. So on to the move. Part one of the Rebecca is called the stab. The first step in the stag is a footlock. This move is pretty basic in what you'll be doing with all other moves in aerial arts. For the footlock, you're going to hold the silk close to the inside of your body. Move your foot out and around. Inside, grab by your calf, over, under, and step on the silk. It is very important that you must show your toes and your heel. If your toes aren't showing, you run the risk of possibly breaking them. And if your heel's not showing, as well as your toes, you could have the wrap wrong and slip out of it while doing a move, causing you to follow the move entirely and maybe even the silk. Now, another thing is you don't want to pull too much by your calf when you're wrapping your foot if you're starting from the ground because it may put your footlock too low for you to be able to complete the move. Also, if you're doing this for the first time, the footlock will feel uncomfortable at first, but that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. If it hurts, you should probably check again to see if it's correct, but many moves in aerial arts, the first time you do it, it probably won't feel that great. Now, I like to do my moves a little bit farther off the ground, so I'm going to take a couple climbs before I start this. Separate my silk, and I'm going to make a footlock using just my feet, but it's the same principle. Out around, over top, and underneath. So you're going to hold yourself with your elbow, wrap the silk around your body, around your waist twice, and I like to prop my knee up to make sure I don't lose the silk by my hip. Push them down to your waist, and flip over, putting your knee over both silks to get yourself in the stag position. Don't forget to add some flair, point your toes, pose your arms, and look graceful if that's what you're going for. Part two is the Rebecca splits. For this, you're going to crochet your leg in the silk, pull yourself up, Rest that silk on your chest and add some flair. Point your toes, pose your arms, and once again, look graceful. For crochet clarification, you are going to unbend your top leg, put it between the two silks, and wrap from inside out and up again. Continuing the move, you're going to use that as a step to pull you up and through. Part three is the Rebecca drop. 
here, you are going to fall through the silk. You're going to catch that wrapped foot, remove the free one, and then you're at the end of your move, so you can add some flair, point your toes, wrap the silk around, put your foot on your head, and just do about whatever you want. Make sure you catch that wrapped foot and release the other. If you go through, it won't look that graceful. Higher up in the air, it'll be harder to get out. And this is why you must always keep your wrapped leg straight, because the silk that is wrapped around your foot is connected to the ceiling. By bending it, I'm giving myself less room to work with and making the move impossible to continue through and harder to get out. Getting out of a move is just as important, if not more so. The end of your routine is the last part people will see, and even if you're graceful the entire time in the beginning, if you look like you're tied in a ball of yarn, that's all people will remember. It is pretty simple though. You can just go exactly backwards. You'll pull yourself up, back through the silk the way you were, keeping that leg straight. It's an optional star pose. You're going to unhook your legs, stand up, and then unwrap that silk from around your waist. You kick off that foot lock, wrap your legs, never drop out of the silk, and you'll be done. Now to get out of a foot lock, you can do this with your hand or foot. You're going to remove the tension from underneath, kick it off over the front. As you're getting out of the drop, you can take a moment to pause, hook one arm, point your arm and foot, and that is an optional star pose. Sorry, a little bit Posing of trouble. And we're done. Thank you for watching.